here on Air One, one of three point seven, and I think you know this guy. Help us welcome the stage, Colton Dixon. They actually, they were like, no, I have no right? idea who this that guy is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna sneak on the other side of you. <laughs> right there it is. There we go, because Lauren and I get to share a microphone. Yeah, this never happens. We share. Wow. How are you? We weren't gonna share, but this guy's really nice at sharing. How have you been? Really good. How are you guys? You guys good? It's a beautiful day in Houston, so that's awesome. It's hot. Um, they call it Winter Jam for a reason, so it's normally like really cold and snowy. <laughs> um, but we like this a lot, so you guys are doing something right. Thank you. Yeah. Where is, uh, just speaking of places to be, obviously not so wintry right here, but I think everyone's enjoying that. Where is your favorite place to do a show besides Houston? Besides, besides Houston. Besides Houston. Um, man, um, I really like the city of Chicago. Um, we don't get to play there very often, um, but I really like Chicago. Um, excited to be there. My wife's never been, so I'm excited to take my wife there and explore the city some, but it's probably my favorite. And your wife of a year. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, marriage is good. Marriage is really good. Excited to have her out with me on the road, and, and uh, it's a lot of fun. She's like an Instagram model. She's beautiful, and <laughs> she she's so gorgeous. sweet. gorgeous. Yes. I'm not I, telling you anything you don't know. It's but. true. I married up big time. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's amazing, and she's gorgeous, so it's a lot of fun. What's been the biggest surprise of marriage from the first year into it? Oh, man, um, how quickly it's gone by. Um, we, I feel like we blinked, and we're a year into marriage. Um, We've learned so many things, and we continue to learn so many things day in and day out. It's a daily thing, and uh, um, it's just, it's funny. Before we got married, so many people trying to pour in advice, and you're just overwhelmed, and, and then you get into marriage, and you're like, oh my gosh, that is so true. Um, it's like you can relate with all of that premarital advice that you've been given, but it's great, though. We're loving it. I love that. You just had a, a new music video come out to you. We're speaking of all these new things. You've yeah. got newness in your life right yeah, now. Yeah, there's a lot of new things. Um, we've got new music for you guys, finally. Thank you for bearing with us. Um, so excited about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, first single off the record is called All That Matters. Um, we just debuted a music video for that, which was way fun. Um, kind of went a new direction with it and uh, had a lot of fun with that. But um, People Magazine premiered that, which is yeah. crazy. Um, man, they've just been a huge part of uh, Annie and I and our relationship, they which is weird. Um, yeah. yeah, People Magazine. People who, love you, who would have would have known? Um, but yeah, so it's been really fun. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. But um, but yeah, that's a little bit about what's going on. Now, what's it like shooting a music video and doing all of that? Because I imagine it's obviously different than performing on stage. Are there any challenges? Yeah. So um, I can't not sing um, while shooting a music video. Some artists can just lip it. Um, but man, there's so many takes, and with a song like All That Matters, it's pretty high um, to sing. So by the end of the night, my voice is shot, um, just because I can't not sing along with it. It's so weird. But funny story about that music video is we showed up to our location, and this empty warehouse had skylights. And we were using a projector um, to shoot onto us and onto the wall behind us. Um, that's kind of what the music video is all about. And with the skylights, we weren't able to do that because the room was lit up. So we were like, okay, this is, a, this is an issue. So they bought, um, how many balloons? It was a lot of balloons, 200 balloons. And they, they tied them all together and tried to let them go at the, the right moment so that they would block all the skylights. It wound up not working, so we postponed it till later. But still, what a hilarious story, right? So funny, things you gotta do. I just, I just, I didn't even see your face, but as soon as you said balloons, I'm like, Lauren's face is like, <gasps> That's like a dream. It's amazing. I love that. Everyone had helium voices. It was just good. You Everyone sounded like chipmunks. It was awesome. So you, you guys did do the helium. Oh, it was the best. I keep trying to make people at the office, at the station, do that with me, because I have a whole bunch of balloons, and nobody will do it. I keep calling it the 201 because it's on the balloon, but it's, nobody will do that with it's me. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> it's it good. is. Yeah. Yeah. I love doing that. Okay, so something I've always wondered, because clearly neither one of us is ever going to be on a music video. Well, maybe. If you ever need anybody to help you. If we need extras. We yeah. know who to call. I'll hold the balloons. <laughs> All right. Um, what, do, what do you do? Like, when you show up, you know, is there catered food? What is a music video set like? Um, it changes. Um, it, every, every set's different. It kind of depends on where you are. Um, in this last one, we showed up, and there was a catering table. I can't think of the, what they call it. Um, they call it something. Um, but there's a bunch of different snacks for you laid out on the table. I'm just like, as, 
it's almost like, am I on the list? To, can, I, <laughs> can I partake in this? Um, but then you've got makeup, um, which my wife did everyone's makeup for the music video. Um, so uh, that was really, really cool. And then you've got hair, you've got wardrobe. Um, and then, um, yeah, basically people are trying to make you look as good as possible. And then they're like, all right, you're camera ready. And then they kind of shoo you off, um, and uh, and then yeah, you you do your thing. Do your thing. You do your thing. That's right. Now, of all the music videos that you've had a chance to shoot, which one was your favorite? Why and why? Oh man. Um, like I said, we we kind of went a different direction with this one, and we had a blast. Um, but man, um, director of my first three videos, his name is Eric Welch. He's done a lot of music videos for Toby and. He won Video of the Year with Carrie Underwood at the CMAs one year, so just really talented. Um, but probably the first music video I ever did is called Never Gone, um, and uh, just kind of a prodigal son story. Um, but him and I, um, one of us mentioned Tim Burton, and just took off, and, uh, and our ideas were just kind of coming out left and right, but um, we just connected um, on that level, and. It was just a lot of fun getting to work with him and, and uh, seeing. I showed up at the um, at the music video shoot one day um, where they were filming the story, and it was just so cool to see how all of that works. I felt like I was on a movie set. It was just so cool, um, and I'm like, wait, this is for one of my songs? What is going on? It's so weird. But um, that was probably just the coolest because it was the first, and it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. Now you've been traveling around the country doing all kinds of tours, uh, shows, and stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna sit really close to Lauren, but it's just because of the. Hey. We're gonna. So now I'm falling for you. Uh, what? That's the first time you've said that. That is the first time. Uh, so what's uh, getting to travel the country and do all these shows? What's been like one of those times where you just something crazy has happened? And you just can't wait to go like go home and tell your wife or tell your family like you are not gonna believe this happened at a show. Um. Hmm. This was really cool. Um, a friend of ours. Um, has this organization called Skip One, um, which is like instead of instead of buying Starbucks, you're gonna skip it and you're gonna donate the money um, for kids overseas or, or whatever it may be. Um, it's really really cool thing. Um, she had me and my wife come out to California, and what she didn't say was who all was gonna be there. She's like, we'd love for you to sing a couple songs at this event, and we got there. And most of the cast of Fuller House was there. And I'm like, yo, I'm singing Let Them See You to, to like Candace Cameron and, and all these people. Yes, um, what, what's the dad's name? I can't, I'm blanking. Bob Saget. Um, man, Bob Saget. Um, there's no words for Bob Saget. But um, I had an encounter with Bob Saget that I probably shouldn't. Um, oh, okay. talk about okay. but anyway it was just really funny because Bob Saget um, but it was just crazy because we're up on stage and and I'm playing Let Them See You and my wife sang through all of it with me and, and we're just like God is so cool like what is this opportunity right now like just to, to talk about Jesus in front of people who have a have a lot of weight to carry in Hollywood um, just crazy thing um, that's probably the most nutso thing I've ever been a part of it's like, I'm singing to a bunch of celebrities right now. This is weird. Yeah. Now, even though you are a celebrity, do you ever get, like, starstruck where you just, like, you see someone and you just freeze? Yeah. Um, I, I like a band called 30 Seconds to Mars. Um, it's, like, really anthemic. Um, but Jared Leto, um, he was just the most recent Joker and, and um, DC Comics movie. But um, I met him once, and I just stopped talking. Um, he came in... I was at a meet and greet for 30 seconds, and they came in behind me, threw his arm around me. He was like, hey man, how are you doing? And I was just, <laughs> I had never met him before. I might not ever meet him again, but he, he will probably know me as the guy who just completely, <laughs> yeah, it happens. Even to us, it happens, yeah, so good. Now, speaking of, uh, so like meet and greets and stuff, what has been the coolest fan experience we've had where maybe someone's come in and done, like the freeze, and you're like, and you don't know what to do. Like, how's that worked out? Oh man, um, it's. I don't mean it in a bad way, but it's always uncomfortable because I'm just one of you guys. Um, I grew up listening to Christian music and and even going to Winter Jam. Um, I remember where I sat in Nashville going to Winter Jam. So just, um, it's just weird. 
um, I I've had a couple people cry, um, and I'm just like... <laughs> Who are they crying for? Yeah, this is crazy. Um, but my favorite fan experiences are, are just um, the ones where they just kind of share a little bit of their story and, and how maybe one of my songs put a small part in, in how they came to know the Lord or, or just um, how God really met them face to face. And golly, um, I'm pretty emotional when it comes to stuff like that. Um, my wife will tell you I'm not allowed to watch Extreme Home Makeover in our house anymore. <laughs> um, but man, that's just the best kind of like feel good story to me. Um, that's why I love what I do. Um, you know, the getting to be on stage and play for you guys, that's fun, but it's, it's like those stories that really keep me going. It's just so much fun to get to hear that. Yeah. So many of your songs, like you just said, people will tell you, have been an introduction to who Jesus is for the first time or to knowing him in a deeper way, which thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you know, that's I'm sure that's sobering to think about that. Is there a song for you that did that? That like stands out in your mind as, you know, a young boy listening to Christian music that's like, man, that's my go to song because I felt like I knew Jesus a little differently after listening to that. Man, um like I said, I, I kinda grew up listening to Christian music altogether. Um I came to the Lord when I was um, seven or eight years old, seven I believe, and and um, I can only imagine by Mercy Me was just kind of that, that was at its pinnacle, you know, um, and that's the song that just won't die, um, <laughs> it just keeps going, but it, it is just the mecca of Christian songs, but um, I remember um, that was the first time God used that song um, to kind of introduce music and that desire of music in my heart. Um, I was at a piano recital and was supposed to play that song, um, but my piano teacher thought that I needed to sing it that night for whatever reason. That's a really hard song to sing, especially when you're going through puberty. Um, but anyway, um, so I sang it, and uh, it, it was just, it was crazy. I was filled with the Spirit and just like knew that this was it. And it's just the wildest thing ever, but um, here I am, um, you know, however many years later. Um, God's really good, and whenever He promises you something, He's going to do it. And uh, yeah, but yeah, I can only imagine it's probably it for me. I love that. Yeah. Do you ever get stage fright to this day? Oh yeah. Do you? Um, even on this stage, I think, I think I'm more nervous about this kind of setup than that kind of setup. I don't know why. Is it so close? I, I don't. I think it's because. I mean, we like you. You're a good-looking group, but you yeah, really right here. Um, yeah, I think it's because I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna say, and that scares me a little bit. Um, <laughs> And yeah, there's just no telling. Um, we did not give you any rundown either on what we were about to do, so yeah. sorry. Oh boy, yeah, it's true. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I don't trust myself sometimes. Um, my guys always make fun of me because if I start, if I'm, you know, talking about a song, if I if I do anything different, they're kind of like, uh-oh, he's about to say something stupid. <laughs> and it's true. I've said so many dumb things on stage, but yeah. How do you get over that? Like right before you go on, you know, you start getting like kind of sweaty and nervous. What do you do? Like jumping jacks or? Yeah, I mean, um, not to go too serious, but um, like deep down, I know that that um, whether God uses me or not, he's still going to move. And that's just really encouraging. He doesn't need me. Um, and that's how cool is that? Um, it's a little humbling to think about. Um, but man, tonight, he doesn't need me. He's already there. He's been there um, weeks ago. He's everywhere, you know what I'm saying? He's waiting He's waiting on us in Bossier City, Louisiana tomorrow. Um, and just really excited. Um, two people, like Louisiana. That's yeah, awesome. That's good. Like um, it's not Texas. Um, but um, yeah, so it's just good to know that, um, that regardless of what you do or don't say or, or whatever, that, that God's ultimately going to carry out his plan and will anyway. It's really good. It's just nice to be on the other side of it, to be a part of it as well. So, yeah. So, this, this, we're going totally from spiritual to, I have to ask this, about your hair. Come on. How do you make it stand up so good? Um, <laughs> I know it's not right now, but are we going to see it later all the right, way out? Right, I had to wake up early. It, it like, doesn't, it doesn't wake it doesn't up. Wake if, <laughs> if I have to, if I have to be somewhere at like 9 or 10 a.m., it's like, ah, uh, just put on a hat today. Um, yeah. Uh, blow dryer is okay. uh, is key in uh, the Colton Dixon suitcase. Um, talking in third person, this is weird. Um, yeah, blow dryer kind of does it, and then a little bit of product just to keep it there, and then um, it's good. 
What's great about tonight is we've got like 15 minutes on stage. So it's like, all right, all right, Harry, you can manage 15 minutes. But it's like the hour and a half sets. That's whenever you see it starting to become like <laughs> Wicked Witch of the West, like, you know, starting to melt. Yeah. Yeah, especially outside. Oh, man, there's some funny after-show pictures of festivals. Yeah, I'd like to good. see some of those. I think all of us are going to be hashtagging that later. Yeah, now. I'll have to post one later. Um, I have to tell you, just because your hair has inspired me, I'm not going to do that hairdo, by the way. I've got but the I, trimmers. I, Let me know. You know. Yeah. Yeah, unless we're doing that for a cause, it's not happening. But I've heard that if you do, like, uh, egg whites in your hair, it stays longer. So I felt like I should really? share that with you. But I don't know how you separate it. But egg whites, because it's the stiffer part, you know? So you whip it up and then you like slick. I've seen it. I watched it on YouTube. YouTube that. But how does it smell though? I mean, you can spray like Febreze or something. <laughs> I don't think it really matters. Like you can smell like breakfast all day. That's not a bad thing. My wife loves breakfast, so she'd be happy. I'm looking out for you, Annie, yeah. wherever you are. <laughs> I just had to ask I'm going to have to get back with you on that. Okay. You'll, Egg you'll... whites in the hair. Yeah. All right. I don't know if my tour mates would appreciate that very much. Hashtag my uh, Air One Radio when you do that, please, Done. would you? Done deal. Mike, do you have anything else you want to say? So, well, a couple more quick questions for you. After a show, and you have your, your after show hair, what are the things that you, you and the guys do on the bus to sort of like unwind? Because I would imagine being on stage, you guys are hyper, you're crazy, and then it's like you can't just go to sleep after that. So what do you do? Yeah, um, we are, um, I'm glad we're, we don't go on like super late in the night because it does give us a chance before we get on the bus to unwind. Um, we have Devo before the show every day, um, which is just great to kind of come together and, and focus on what we need to focus on. But after the show, it's... It's kind of free for all. Um, I love ping pong. My wife loves ping pong. That just kind of, I don't know, it's a chance to unplug and, and be competitive for a second. And, um, we love movies. And, um, but yeah, um, it's crazy. Our team, um, a couple of us have doubled up. They're helping with merch. And, and um, it, it, But it's just kind of crazy. But my favorite, favorite is getting on the bus after a show and and seeing the after show food it's waiting for you it's like oh praise the lamb it's amazing whether it's um mellow mushroom pizza or um some boneless wings oh man um none of it's ever healthy um but it's just good so good <laughs> is, it, is there something that when you go to a different city do you that you go out and do that you guys are excited about doing? Do you have something like that in every city you go to? Like you have to go to this coffee shop or something? Um, today was Papacitos, um, and we we've, we've already conquered Papacitos for today. Um, so that's that's why um, I'm talking a little bit slower than normal. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, it just kind of depends on what city. Um, honestly, most of it either pertains with coffee or food. Um, that's kind of the, the, the thing. Um, however, we were just in St. Louis. Um, this is random. Um, if you're ever in St. Louis, they have this museum there that's for kids through the day, but then it's like adult only at night. But it's just the steel jungle gym, and it's like five stories in this building. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, I went with David Crowder, and that just made the experience so much better. Um, it was unbelievable. We passed it coming back from something that we had to do that day, and and David was like, "Hey, man, you you want you want to go to that jungle gym, man?" <laughs> and who says no to Crowder asking? Exactly. You that? It's like, sure, let's do it, and we did, and it's amazing. It's called the City Museum in St. Louis. If you ever go, but yeah, sometimes we're discovering new things. You kind of stumble upon something, and then it becomes an every trip kind of thing. So it just depends. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time before yeah. kicking this off tonight and everything. And uh, can we just give it up for Colton Dixon tonight? And who's excited to see this guy perform later? Thank you. Hey, guys, we're going to be back later with some other people, too. So uh, while you wait, just know that you can swing by, say hello to us. And one more time, Colton Dixon. Thank you.